Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here with you and Jill Borba. She is a nutritionist who practices with me at Naturopathic Family Health. She focuses in helping patients with sugar cravings. This is a topic that's really important to me because sugar regulation is a big part of getting your hormones to be stable. And of course, in the current environment, controlling your sugar cravings can have tremendous benefits to inflammation, immune health, and overall resilience to stress. So we're gonna talk about all these topics in the coming presentation. Yes. So um, I'm Jill Borba and I work at Naturopathic Family Health with Dr. Sony. And um, like she said, I'm in private practice doing one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling. Um, and one of my favorite things to work with is um, sugar cravings and healing sugar cravings and healing your relationship with sugar, um, as well as all of those uh, chronic degenerative diseases that kind of result from this imbalance of intake in sugar, such as, you know, diabetes, PCOS, all of these insulin rela resistance related diseases. So, um, Dr. Sony, do you want to talk about how insulin resistance develops? Yes, if you just switch the slide. Right. Here we go. Yeah. So welcome to the sugar roller coaster. So this is what happens as soon as you taste something that is sweet. As soon as it hits your taste buds, insulin is released in your body even before the glucose has gotten to you. So insulin goes up as well as serotonin, beta endorphins, and eventually your blood sugar. So this increases your energy, creates a state of euphoria, but eventually that insulin catches up. The purpose of the insulin is to prevent a detrimental glucose spike. But when this insulin catches up and you get an insulin spike, your blood sugar then drops and the decreased blood sugar feels like fatigue, mental fogginess, and it can lead to a craving for even more sugar because you want to go back to feeling that dopamine and that euphoria. So this up and down, back and forth long term does contribute to weight gain, hormonal imbalance, and increases your risk of insulin resistance and other inflammatory conditions including PCOS and other metabolic diseases. Right, so, oh. and this is just an explanation of how it can feel in your body. So initially you're having the cookie, cookie you feel a little optimistic, excited, um, you feel bliss, and then the sugar does drop a while after that. And, it, and you'll notice an increase in anxiety. It can even feel like panic and fear, even depression. And then you're, you're set up for craving some more sugar to get you back to feeling euphoric. So again, that high blood sugar can contribute to inflammation, weight gain, even thirst. Low blood sugar can contribute to hunger, fatigue, mental fog, irritability. Um, but it's this up and down wobbly blood sugar level that is very damaging because of hormonal effects. And this up and down is also what contributes to addiction. Yeah. So what is a healthy relationship with sugar? Um, the reason that I love working with this is because I struggled with it myself for many years. And, um, and then I was eventually able through trial and error to create a really healthy relationship with sugar that's really balanced. And so one of the challenges that comes up for a lot of people and one of the sort of misconceptions and the reasons that people don't necessarily want to address it is because they think that the only solution is abstinence and completely avoiding sugar, which, um, really what to me a healthy relationship with sugar looks like is um, eating a reasonable amount of dessert that doesn't make me feel sick afterwards, but also doesn't make me feel deprived initially either. Um, it means not feeling bad about myself when I do overeat or punishing myself with restricted eating that's disguised as healthy. Um, it means being free of these blood sugar spikes that Dr. Sony's talking about that leave me feeling irritable, confused, and tired. Um, it also, one thing that's really important, it, it's a, it gives me a healthy future free of diabetes, heart disease, and other chronic degenerative diseases. Um, it also means truly appreciating the desserts and the treats that I eat rather than eating them mindlessly and uncontrollably. And it really means taking my power back and feeling good about both food and myself. And so that's really my goal when I'm working with people to give them that. 
And so how I do that, it's kind of, um, it's really a three-pronged approach on how I address it. And that's looking at the physical aspect, the behavioral aspect, and the emotional aspect. And so in terms of the physical aspect, um, it's really about balancing the blood sugar. So it's everything that Dr. Sony was just talking about. Um, this is all based on diet. And so, and the beautiful thing is that that means that we can correct all of it and we can balance it all and have a healthy relationship. Um, so really I go about teaching people what makes up a meal that's going to sustain them for five to six hours until the next meal. And this is really, this is going to help with insulin resistance and preventing that, but it's also going to reduce those sugar cravings, right? So I can, I can enjoy sugar and sweets, um, in a healthy way, but not be at their mercy sort of, um, because I don't have those blood sugar spikes that are making my body scream for it. And, um, and then there's also addressing the hidden sugars in our diet and kind of our total um, sugar consumption and the whole total load of it. Um, a lot of times people are aware that sugar is in things like cake and cookies and ice cream, but what people don't typically realize is it's in a lot of other foods. Um, ketchup has sugar in it, right? Who oh, no. And then maybe you do, do know that there's sugar in other things, but you don't really realize the extent. A lot of food that's marketed as healthy, for instance, um, Nusa yogurt, right? We think of yogurt as a healthy alternative, right? But Nusa yogurt actually has more sugar than a serving of Ben and Jerry's does. Um, you know, serving per serving. And so it doesn't mean that you can't have that Nusa yogurt. It just means that you want to be aware of that so you understand the total amount of sugar that you're having. And by reducing that and being aware of that, you're going to be able to reduce those sugar cravings as well. And then I use behavioral techniques to address the, um, oh, I think I have this all on here. Um, Behavioral techniques that are really useful for, I, my, my work is very client-centered, so it depends on the individual. And we really look at the challenges that are coming up and then, you know, some techniques to address those challenges and move through them. And so like one simple technique that's very powerful that I use a lot um, with my clients and I personally use in my own life is um, to have sweets. Let's say you have a, a food that's very tempting for you that you're you may be struggling with, and um, and it's and it's available to you. So you've got that internal conflict going on of oh I shouldn't eat it but I really want to. And and this can be really emotionally challenging for people. I know it it, it is for me. Um, one of the things that I'll do is is have it with a meal. And so what this does is it takes you out of this internal conflict. So, for instance, um, during the holidays, my mom and my sister love to uh, bake cookies, Christmas cookies. And so they're sitting around all over the place. And so in the past, I would really struggle with trying to stay away from them. And then eventually when I started using this technique, it became really easy because it'd be like, okay, once I have a meal, whether it's lunch or dinner, I can have some cookies. And the likelihood that you're going to overeat them at that point is very low because number one you you're full you have a healthy you know you've got healthy food and also um you're not going to sit and eat 12 cookies in one sitting whereas before when there wasn't that that um, line in the sand you know i would keep picking at them and at the end of the day it'd be like oh my god i ate like a dozen cookies whereas you know with a meal it's just going to be two or three and so, um, and, and most importantly, this really gets you out of that internal conflict. And so there's no self-judgment, there's no guilt around it. You're just enjoying it. Um, and then the third approach um, that I look at is really emotional. And a lot of times there are emotional triggers that are gonna cause the, these um, overeating or binges or, or just eating foods that you don't really feel are supporting your health. And so really getting in touch with those is gonna give, it's gonna empower you. It's gonna give you the opportunity to really use these different behavioral techniques to, to address it and to really like choose something else. Um, and also, Lastly, um, self-judgment. A lot of people come in with a lot of self-judgment around this. Um, they don't realize that this is really a physical addiction. 
and that sugar has a physiological effect very similar to cocaine. And so Dr. Sony, if you would like to talk about that and help people to understand that, I think that that can really free up a lot of self-judgment and um, guilt. Yes, so if you change the slide, we'll get to it. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about what your brain looks like when you consume sugar. You can, if you could switch to the next slide. High fat and high sugar foods stimulate the brain in the same way that drugs do. Sugar meets the criteria for substances of abuse according to the neuroscience and behavioral reviews. You can see how sugar lights up the brain in this picture even brighter than cocaine does. And part of this is because of the dopamine release that positive dopamine relief release that reinforces the behavior of eating sugar, making it more likely for us to carry out these actions again. So that addictive nature is one of the reasons why it's not something I recommend just quitting tomorrow. It is something that over time you develop a healthy relationship with, just like Jill mentioned. I know I, when I was growing up in the 90s, I had that sugar diet where it was cereal for breakfast or Pop-Tarts for breakfast. Um, and so, you know, that set me up for, as a teenager, different types of hormonal issues like acne, for example. And so um, something like that doesn't shift overnight. And but currently, I will say that I have zero sugar cravings and it has to do with throughout that process, reducing it over time. So you do get, you can get to a point where sugar is just something you don't desire at all because you've been reducing it gradually without the, the, any negative self thoughts because those can also be cyclic. I also want to briefly talk about other reasons why someone might have sugar cravings. Sometimes it is deficiency in certain minerals that can contribute to that desire for even chocolate. Chocolate, for example, is a good source of magnesium. And magnesium is something that increases your body's response to insulin. And so it's it can also be a common nutrient deficiency that contributes to why someone has sugar cravings. Another top nutrient to help you if you are having sugar cravings is chromium. Additionally, omega-3 fatty acids are something that our population in the United States is across the board quite deficient in, and that can improve your insulin response and reduce sugar cravings. The adrenals are those glands that sit on top of your kidney. They are involved in your fight or flight response. If you are burnt out, that can, that can be part of why you're having sugar cravings because um, in, this, in the sugar roller coaster we talked about earlier, when you hit your lows, if insulin is not able to catch up, your body secretes adrenaline and it puts you into that fight or flight response that contributes to burnout. So if we treat some of the root causes, including adrenal fatigue, that itself can help you reduce your cravings for sugars and salts. Another reason why someone might have these terrible cravings is bacteria overgrowth or even candida overgrowth. So it's important to work with a practitioner, discover what the cause is for you, and be on a long-term plan to create a lifestyle that works for you when it comes to sugar. Oh, we went through that. <laughs> Yeah, pro tip, eat, eat treats with a meal. I like this one a lot. I also like to make breakfast the biggest meal so you're set up with healthy blood sugar for the rest of the day. You don't start out with a sugar rise and a sugar crash. There's there's so many other tips like that Jill has as well. Um, but we yeah. want to... I like that you mentioned breakfast because um, I think so often so many people come to me and they're stuck in this breakfast. I always say think outside the breakfast box because what we have an idea of is that breakfast should either be grains or eggs, right? And so because so many people, even you, you read on like, you know, food blogs that are, are healthy and they'll have, you know, overnight oats for breakfast or, you know, different, different grains. And in fact, this actually is just like lunch and dinner should include um, protein and vegetables and healthy complex carbohydrates. Yeah, and in, in fact, breakfast should be one of your biggest meals in the day. That's when your insulin response is the best. Insulin response is cued in with the sun when the sun sets. Um, you're more likely to store glucose in as fat. It's that's sun setting is a time for fasting and resting. So breakfast should be your biggest meal and it should be rich in that protein and fat, just like Jill mentioned. Yeah. 
So if you'd like to learn more, this is where I practice. Don't hesitate to send me a message. Um, yeah, I love helping women with hormone conditions, especially endometriosis. Getting out sugar can be a great way to reduce your inflammation in conditions like endometriosis. Yeah, yeah, and that blood sugar balance is absolutely key in all of that hormone balance. Mm -hmm. And um, I can also be reached at Naturopathic Family Health. Um, you can also find all kinds of information at jillborba.com. I have free resources on my website as well as links to social media where you can see pictures of what these meals actually look like. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you for joining.